Well, welcome back to my reviews. And today I've got some uh, Corgi military models. I've got a uh, Corgi Major toy. The Bristol Bloodhound missile. And then I've got a English Electric Thunderbird missile. The Thunderbird came into the range in 1958 and was around till 1962. It also came on a trolley. which could be towed by uh, by the Land Rover, the RAF Land Rover. It could actually be towed by uh, any Corgi vehicle with a tow hook. Also got another Thunderbird missile that I got at the second hand store last year. And it, someone has repainted it at one point. It looks like an RAF blue. And I recently got a new uh, tip for it. To go on. So I'm going to repaint this one and I also got a the trolley for it too at the second hand store at the time. So I'm going to repaint the missile and get it on the trolley. I've got the number 1116, the launch ramp for the Bloodhound missile. Nice unit. Swivels around. Makes for a very nice display. This is a pretty good depiction of this uh, this weapon. It's got four solid fuel boosters here that propel the missile. And I think it had a, a ceiling of 60,000 feet. And it's got two Bristol ramjets fueled by kerosene. Gives it the main power. And it had, a, had the Ferranti electronic equipment for guidance. Imagine it was a pretty big deal when Corgi put this out. Right in the midst of the Cold War. Now the Bloodhound. To tow it, you use this trolley. be towed behind the Land Rover or whatever. And you want to mount it on the uh, firing platform. Got a little crank here. 
brings the missile up. Allows you to back it in. Got it a little too high there. There we go. There we go. There's the Bloodhound on the launching ramp. There's a trolley to haul it. And the Thunderbirds. I decided to paint uh, or repaint both the Thunderbird missiles. I didn't like the RAF blue color on the one. Anyways, I painted them, stripped them and painted them both white, a flat white, and then I uh, gloss coated both of them. And I found some old decals I had. I'm going to try them out. Put them on the missiles. Well, I repainted the two Thunderbirds and uh, put, put decals on them. I think the white looks good. I don't uh, think I would have liked silver, which is what some of them came as originally. So they look pretty good. It's brightened them up a lot. These little trolleys are quite neat. See all four, uh, all four wheels turn. It's got that little connecting bar there. This uh, tow bar is plastic. These black wheels are plastic, and then it's got this wire clip. Allows you to slip the wings under there and hold it level while you tow it. It's pretty nice, huh? Another uh, model that shows in this Rocket Age pamphlet is uh, number 1102. A Euclid T12 bulldozer. And in the Great Book of Corgi, it's got a nice colored picture with this uh, bulldozer in the scene. So 
That's why I'm including it in these Rocket Age models. This one came into the series in 1958 and was withdrawn in 1963. It's a good heavy model, this one. Came with a plastic, almost rubbery driver. Actually, the same driver as on the Combine Harvester. So, you could get this in yellow or in the lime green, which is the one I've got, the lime green. The picture in the Great Book of Corgi shows this clearing sites for the launching pads for the bloodhounds. The bloodhound and the trolley came as a set from 1959 to 1961. And the Thunderbird missile is number 350. And the Bloodhound on the launcher could be bought as a set from 1958 to 1960. And the Bloodhound all by itself could be bought from 1959 to 1960. And on the launch ramp from 1959 to 1960. So there's some neat models and a pretty short-lived series from Corgi. Um, well worth getting if you can find any. That's the uh, Corgi Rocket Age models, or some of the models. I hope you enjoyed my video and we'll see you next time.